Hey everyone, just a word before this video gets started. Um, this is a interpretation of the symbols of the Chinese calendar, which has been used over 2000 years in every aspect of Chinese society, from figuring out the best days to do things or do certain rituals to understanding the basic energetic of the years, which um, again is informed by where the position of the planets are in the different uh, constellations, uh, primarily uh, with the calendar uh, where Jupiter is, um, which is significant being the biggest uh, planet in the solar system. Um, they thought that, you know, depending on where the planets were, uh, there was a measurable effect on uh, human consciousness, on the cycles of nature, on how people behaved and uh, the kinds of things that would happen uh, in human society. Um, and I think, uh, yeah, you know, one example of this was the metal rat year. Usually there's, um, you know, there's this down bearing energy. It's, it's a metal energy, metal drops, sinks. Um, and, uh, and also this rat energy, it's very, uh, you know, it's, it's like a fresh start. And so there's, there's this pressure and then almost like this explosive, you know, got to, you know, it's things fall apart and then we got to start over and rebuild the foundation. Um, and, and you see that every 60 years, there's some sort of world uh, revolution. Uh, we have like the, we have like the Black Lives Matter movement, but all sorts of uh, other things. We had the COVID pandemic again, that uh, upper respiratory infection, you could, you could see that, you know, this down bearing energy is really going to put a lot of pressure on the lungs um, and create kind of those inflammatory processes that we see. Um, and yeah, I, I could go on further. Um, but my hope is uh, if you stick through, you know, some of the of my eccentricities um, and you uh, stick with this, uh, there's a lot of uh, questions and and skills um, that not only relate to interpreting the Chinese calendar, but that are really intended for uh, your benefit as far as um, just improving your quality of life and helping you um, achieve the highest of health, the highest of happiness, um, and uh, success in a way that can be sustained. Um, so without further ado, I hope you enjoy this video and I look forward to sharing this journey with you. Good morning, afternoon and evening, everyone. Welcome to Wisdom of the Chinese Calendar. My name is Motoyuki. I'm your host for the day. Uh, I'm a Chinese medical student about to graduate with my doctorate degree. Fingers crossed. Um, and today we're going to be talking about the energy of Ji Wei or colloquially known as, as Earth Sheep. Um, again, this is specific energy associated with one of the 60 calendar years of the re repeating Chinese calendar um, that was built over 2000 years ago um, and has been used in just about every aspect of Chinese life. Um, now it's used in acupuncture, basically everywhere, but it describes a specific energy. And uh, yeah, today we'll, we'll talk about how that energy translates into a life skill that you can use, how it translates into music that you can listen to and use to support you and how that music may support you. Um, and then we'll also, um, yeah, and then the, the other thing you'll get from this, if you keep up with these videos, is how to interpret the symbols and of the calendar into wisdom on your own. So think of this as a real long-term investment where you're getting a lot out of it, something you can apply right now, and then something that's going to grow inside of you in the years to come. Um, so. One other thing I should mention, I go over the musical correspondences to each of these symbols. So if you're a musician, uh, you'll immediately be able to incorporate some of this into your work. Um, and then the other thing I should say is as I've worked with these symbols, um, 
I always have a different, slightly different take on them, um, especially as I learn more or I get a more holistic perspective of things. Even now I'm looking at what I recorded, um, what you're about to see um, the next day, and I'm starting to think, oh, well, I could have done it this way, I could have done it that way. So understand I'm giving you the foundation for being able to interpret these symbols on your own. Um, and even, you know, a day from now or a year from now, there are going to be more nuances as I learn more. So um, this, yeah, this is partly for my own sharing. And I'd say, you know, in addition to what I say about these symbols, go out, if you're really interested, go out on your own, hear what other people have to say, um, and then, you know, work with these energies on your own and see what resonates within you and keep coming back over time because that's going to give you the clearest sense of what these things mean um, and how you can um, develop a relationship with them that actually empowers you um, and gives you more tools to not only help yourself but help other people hey all so i just uh you know the material in this video is really good um, and i want to recognize that i lumped uh, i think i tried to lump several energies into one energy um, and so I would actually recommend watching my other video, uh, The Evolution, Chinese Medicine, Evolution of Thought into Wisdom. Um, I actually recommend watching that first um, because you'll see what I try to describe in this video um, is part of that process and I've... Uh, yeah, and I, I think you'll, um, this video in part, thi this video that you're watching, um, has, has a lot more about the Chinese calendar and, you know, what the astrology is right now. Um, and I think some really inter interesting information, um, regarding music, um, and like the, the, the details of how to use these symbols and how to interpret them. Um, but I also, you know, I also want to recognize, um, that I think when I filmed it, my perspective was a little bit short-sighted. Um, and, uh, so just take, take that with a grain of salt, uh, knowing that in the, in the video I'm referring to, um, some of those, uh, shortcomings are all clarified. Uh, so that's the main thing. Um, I think you'll enjoy the video regardless, um, but I did want to mention that and I want to assure you that, um, uh, I care about the integrity of what I put out there and if I feel like something's not quite right or, you know, because, you know, I do need to get things out there. Um, but if, if something feels not quite right, then I will come back and I'll make a correction and I'll let you know so that you're never getting, you know, information that's not complete or that's uh, not as accurate as it could be. So, all right. Without further ado, uh, please enjoy this video, and if you haven't seen the other video already, um, take a look over there. I'll try and put it somewhere above my head right now. Today, this should say 22. Um, we are in the uh, metal ox year, or Xin Chou Nian, um, and we're just at the end of it. Uh, we are in a metal ox month. Uh, the whole energetic of this year is about building a foundation for the next 60 year cycles. The question that we ask ourselves in order to embody this energy is what are the fundamental skills that I can sustain 
or what what can I sustain for the next 60 years so we're taking this kind of we're slowing down and seeing how do we do things right the first time um, and yeah this you know different people take these symbols and interpret them different ways um, I think one way we can think of them is like a fundamental life skill. Um, once you learn it, it serves you for life. If you know how to combine fats, proteins, and carbohydrates, you're going to start to apply that in every meal, and it's going to inform your understanding of the world, which is like learning to walk. Um, so this, this year is then... Um, and even this month now, we're also a metal ox month, or a shin, shin cho yue, uh, is, it's really about reinforcing the skills that will serve you for life. Uh, one example in my own life is that I've done a lot of this year is create templates. So I, you know, how can I make a template so that, you know, I can do meditation videos and it can be really easy and yet get the result that I want and really help the amount of people in the way that I really want to. Uh, so it's it's doing the hard work now so that in the future things are smoother. Um, so yes, so this is a month of life skills and uh, that's what we will be doing this month. Um, I've been dormant, uh, again, going really slow, trying to get things right. This month, it's time to act for me. Um, so what do we have? We have the heavenly stem and earthly branch uh, that make up the Chinese calendar. Uh, these heavenly stems uh, are encoded via the five elements, uh, earth, water, wood, fire, metal, um, and this symbol in particular, it's uh, kind of like a plant stock bending over, um, uh, you know, things, it's almost like nature has reached its abundance, and we've picked the fruit, and things are starting to keel over and possibly die. Um, this represents transformation from one state into another. Uh, it's associated with the spleen, uh, whose function in Chinese medicine is to distill food into nutritive essence. Um, or we can think of it as pure thought. Again, this is like when you sit down to eat a meal and you're eating and all of a sudden you get this insight into something in your life. Like, oh, I have to do that. And uh, if it had a color, it'd probably be pure white. Um, this is associated with hexagram one of the I Ching, uh, which is an awesome book broken into 64 chapters. Um, and this first hexagram, again, some of you have probably seen this. There's lots of different versions uh, and remakes for the last, you know, 2,000 years. Um, I have a couple myself, and that's that's a whole other topic. But each organ has a uh, hexagram association. This one, hexagram one, all yang lines, represents purity, creation. Um, yes. I've already said too much. Okay, going on. So, Wei, uh, this is the heaven, uh, as earthly branch. Um, it's the earth of fire. Um, or otherwise known as Earth's second yin. It goes with the small intestine or the yang fire organ. Small intestine also is about transformation. It's uh, about clarity and communication. It takes the, uh, uh, the, it, I have to lay some context here in, in Chinese medicine, the heart is considered 
the emperor, it's that which receives the integrated messages of the body. The small intestine is like the minister that helps um, communicate between the heart and all the other organs, uh, but also like the heart and the outside of the world. Um, so this obviously an oversimplification, but it's really how do we make um, uh, it's about clarification and communication uh, and uh, yeah this the symbol also depicts it's the second uh, or the third month of summer so things have reached their climax and now they're starting to fall it depicts uh, a tree that's heavy with fruit um, and Together, these two symbols can represent um, like a continual refining or clarification of thought. Again, this happens naturally. Um, this happens naturally through many when we communicate, when we write, when we think. Maybe we're out walking and we're just thinking and things get clearer and clearer and denser and denser until eventually it drops into wisdom or long-term memory, um, uh, which in Chinese medicine we say it's now at the level of the essence. It's literally bone deep. You can't forget it. It is you. Um, as a life skill, um, if we want to take an idea and we want to really embody it, we have to ask ourselves the question, how many different ways can I experience and embody a single thought or idea? Um, again, and then the secondary question is really um, what image represents this idea? What word represents this idea? music or sound represents this idea, what movement represents this idea. So we really want to experience at every level whatever it is that we're, we're, we're thinking about and that what we want to learn. Um, we can't just sit and stare at a piece of paper that helps to a certain extent, but if we want to move it into the realm of long-term memory efficiently and effectively, we got to go about it in these different ways. Um, from an elemental perspective, uh, spleen or thought is earth. As we refine it, as we repeat it, it becomes denser and denser and denser. It drops from the space in the heart, um, like, you know, kind of a big metal ball, and it drops, drops down into the, the lower abdominal kidney region where it merges with our essence and becomes who we are now at the level of the marrow, the source chi um, in us. Um, so this is a music channel and I would like to, uh, the foundation of Chinese medicine is actually related to music. The oldest books uh, mention the correspondence between music, the different organ systems, um, and the, the different symbols. So G, um, the symbol is F, Wei, a small intestine, G, uh, these are the, the old pitch standards, or the Lu, um, if you want to look up what those are, uh, you can see Chinese, ancient Chinese pitch standards. You can see uh, they each have, uh, if we want to say, okay, we're going to take this aspect of spleen, which is thinking, and we're going to encode it with the aspect of uh, way, um, or this, this clarification, this condensing of energy through uh, repetition um, in, in many different ways, um, then, uh, yeah, we can um, 
this looks a little confusing, but if we think of, uh, again, we want to activate the spleen, so we're gonna go to turn this up a little bit. There we go, it's, it's a little bit better. So we're gonna use the note F, um, which is, again, corresponding to spleen, and then we're gonna use, let's see, G, so this G2, uh, to correspond to the small intestine. So together, we can uh, kind of activate the uh, small intestine within the spleen, or this process of really refining and condensing thought that music. Um, another way we can do that is play the uh, hexagram rhythm uh, uh, for the uh, small intestine within the spleen. I probably may have lost some of you, but we're, we're just going to keep going and eventually you'll understand. I know this is a lot of information. Uh, another way to do it is we can use the rhythm, so the hexagram uh, that carries the energetic of the um, of the small intestine, um, which is, gosh, what is this? Approach or hexagram 19. I haven't written that, but we can do uh, four eighth notes. So you can see that four eighth notes. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then playing that on the screen note. And uh, yeah, if we want to add an extra energetic, we're really, you know, this there's this idea of purity, and then we're condensing that purity through repetition in different ways and that's going to be a lot more flexible and again I think this is this is where we move from the ancient kind of wisdom into more of a flexibility where we start to ask what are the qualities of these different organs and how do we how do we embody that in music and that's different um, that's a lot different than um, just uh, yeah that's a lot different from uh, just saying this note this organ this rhythm this organ this chord this organ uh, I think it's a bit more uh, nuanced than that and it gives us a little bit more freedom so you have to ask what are the qualities of these organs how do they, um, and how do we, um, whoops, yeah, what are the qualities of these organs and how do we embody that in music? So I'm going to record a piece now and, uh, yeah, set that up. One last thing, um, again, I'm just choosing 120 beats per minute mostly because we're focused on the spleen and we can, you know, arbitrarily, I, I'm saying this because I haven't heard, really heard much about people doing this, but we can think of this as either 60 beats per minute or 120 beats per minute. It's all yang lines. Uh, maybe this would be 80 beats per minute. Uh, so this is just arbitrary but it's you know better than nothing so uh, yeah I'm gonna record now and uh, the other thing I would say um, yeah if you want this music on its own um, please let me know in the comments and I'll post a link to my personal website um, since this does take a lot of time and energy, and I think you'll find it therapeutically effective. Um, 
again for helping that process of really condensing thought into wisdom. Again, it's a skill, um, but also the energy of that skill is encoded in music. So just by listening to the music, uh, you're resonating with the potential inside of you to really embody that skill. Um, and that in turn will help you uh, remember and develop that skill of your own accord without even having to think about it. Um, so there are multiple ways up the mountain. This is just one way. Uh, if you want to follow the music route, um, please let me know in the comments. And if enough people let me know, I will definitely uh, post um, I will definitely post a link to that music and maybe the first few people will get a special deal on that. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'll, uh, record in a moment. Great. If you like this, and even more so if you find this beneficial, um, please let us know in the comments below. Um, and uh, yeah, if you want this piece of music, um, I uh, would be happy to help you. Um, just let me know in the comments. Um, and if you think this is really, really cool, uh, also uh, make sure you hit subscribe and share with your friends. Um, 
Again, my hope is this is something that can help you. Um, yeah, well, I've said enough. Um, my name is Motoyuki, um, and I'm, uh, yeah, looking forward to seeing more of you in the future. Um, and, uh, yeah.